Hello everyone and do remember, welcome again, but do remember to mute yourselves. Please, Kafia is handling the admitting people into the room, which is why you're probably seeing a blacked out uh, screen. And as soon as she does that, we can try and progress on. Um, sometimes it does this kind of delay thing. Um, I've been playing this, or I, I started to play this little clip at the beginning and I think it was the one that I sent you, rather I did send you one, some of you, because some of you booked on late so I didn't get to send you some of the tasks and some of the, the videos, but welcome to this uh, Love uh, Vibration workshop and my name is Michelle and Sanford for those of you who have not met me before and have not been to one of these workshops, so bear with us while we go along. All right, so this is actually just some of these will be to tell you what's what's going on, some of the things that we'll be doing. This is a workshop that is held by the Pan-African Society Community Forum, and this will be on tomorrow, actually. So if you're free, you can book it via Eventbrite there and do that. Um, let me just see. Um, I know what's happened. It's because there's some going on at the back that you can't see. Okay, I will try to come back to those in a bit. Okay, so what this workshop is about, which I try to send to some of you, is its aims, which is why we're doing this and why we set out to do this from since the last couple of months back, I think. I can't remember when the first of them was. Um, is to enable participants to explore the concept of love as a healing power, to support participants with their personal, spiritual and self-development through developing self-love. It's also to encourage attendees to generate affirmations for healing and self-love, because this is uh, backed from another workshop we do, which is the power of affirmations and automatic writing, some of which will be incorporated in here, just to give you the technique as something that you can do in your own lives, in your own practice. It's also to provide techniques that, may, that will help participants to rediscover the healing benefits of meditation as well. Uh, before we go ahead, can you, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, please just pause a minute, like just for a few seconds and take in a few deep breaths in through the nose or the mouth, but take in deep, deep, slow, long, long breath. Release. Inhale again. Release again, inhale again, and release again. Okay. This is really based on the idea of love as meditation and stillness. I have been doing uh, blog posts for, oh, I can't even remember, 2008, something like that. I didn't know there were blogs at the time, they were just articles that I'd write and then I would share them. And I had written this one about love, embracing love as a power. And so this workshop is really based around some of the ideas that I was sharing in that. So the, the, the frequency seed uh, tape that you were just listening to or that I had asked you to listen to, whichever one that was, is based on that whole idea of love as being something where you meditate in stillness and that is the way that you attune to its power. And this is that workshop, uh, or rather this is that, that get rid of that. This is that um, blog post and it's, this is from 2011 and it's embracing love, the spirit of aliveness. So this is what we're gonna go through. We're gonna go through some of the ideas that I was sharing in this post and the first one of the first things that I was arguing is about love being a regenerative power so I'm basically going to read the blog post and then we come in and we do uh, various exercises and we also will also have an opportunity to break out and to to um sorry it's just, just when they come into the waiting room to break out and share our experiences love some say is dead or near it. 
Modernity has meddled with our capacity to fully express our love. Technology has seriously compromised tactility. We touch and swipe screens, not each other. Persisting wars marking most of our lifetimes is antithetical to love and a vital sign of an overlying disconnection with love's regenerative power. Daily images of destruction, degenerative power, are paraded before us of bloodied or blown apart bodies, distressed peoples, particularly children, abstractedly clinging to some strand of humanity to stop the violence and madness. Bombs explode like fireworks at a festival and the media reports on it are orgiastic. As a sign of how advanced we are in warfare, unmanned fighter planes with unmemorable names bounce through Syrian skies like models on their catwalk. Confrontations and struggles against enemies are fangled commodities of terrorization. Terror, not love, is on vogue. Something of the heart becomes desensitized by these images and our tears remain coiled in their ducts. Yet against the emotional tyranny of destruction, the heart yearns to be reacquainted with its purpose. Tears crave the slow journey from their ducts down the contours of the face, slipping into our mouth for us to taste the salt, sweetness and pain of genuine love. So what follows here is a gentle whisper drifting towards those hearts in search of deepest love as the regenerative power of their aliveness. And I'm linking love also as divine consciousness linked to the, the Netaru Osa or Osiris. And he says, or it is written in this book, give me my heart, let it pump again, life's power in me. Infuse my hands and feet with spirit. Give me my heart, let me rise and walk. In the transience of death, Asar, or Asar, pleads for the rekindling of his heart. His other word is called Osiris, the Greeks called him Osiris, but in Kemet he's Asar. The heart fires life, infusing the body with spirit. Those words, rekindling and fires, are not whimsical, but are ineffectual in the awakening of Asar, or effectual in the awakening of Asar. This is how he will rise and walk. Shaman Patrice Somme of the Dagara in Burkina Faso says that fire is both regenerative and thus constructive and degenerative and therefore destructive. In other words, fire is both positive and negative. Modernity, technology, and persisting wars are symbols of fire in the Western world, relating to rapid progress of a kind, restlessness, radical consumption, and ultimately death, literal and metaphoric. Fire in this context is expressed negatively. When expressed positively, according to Sommet, fire is the element that keeps people connected to their purpose and to the world of spirit. Fire in this sense emerges as vision, dream, and intimacy with the ancestors. It is in this context, the exploration of fire as the warmth of being, creativity and life, that I present an interpretation of Asar's plea for the return of his heart. Asar being symbolic of divine consciousness, of transcendence, of elevation, of the risen, the crown chakra, in short, the God within principle, which is the source of the regenerative power of love. The expanded consciousness embodies love, for it knows itself. It honors its power, its creativity, its purpose. It does not hide or refract from the responsibility to progress through love. To love is to live, to embrace, and perpetuate the boundless beauty of our universe. Okay, so <laughs> this is for you to do an exercise. Um, I'll bring you into the into the main room so that I can do you what's called a breakout. But have a look at these for a minute and bear them in mind because some of you would have received this prior to the to the class. 
and uh, so it's about these these quotations which we're going to try to get you to discuss you're going to discuss don't ever think I fell for you or fell over you I didn't fall in love I rose in it that's by Toni Morrison love is never any better than the lover equally by Toni Morrison you yourself as much as anybody else in the entire universe deserve your love and affection, Buddha. So the idea and the task for you is to consider and discuss with your breakout group, which one of the quotations would you say most resonates with you? Discuss why and in what ways with your breakout group, okay? So I'm just gonna come out of this a minute. All right, so I'm back in the room and I'm, I'm seeing, okay, right. Hello everybody again. <laughs> Hello everyone. <laughs> you don't see what I see. <laughs> I just see light and beauty and I see lots of love. So I'm gonna put you in a breakout room or so that you can discuss those. I hope you were able to write them down. And there are about 26 of you or so, so. Um, 26, how many rooms do we want? We wanna give you good enough time to talk. Okay, so. What you do with the breakout rooms, uh, if you don't know, is it will be a prompt and it will put you in a room. And then all you do is you just join it. And when you join it, you are then able to have a discussion with your group, okay? Um, so I will add Carol in a minute because I think she's just coming back in. So once she's in, once she's in, I will add her to one of the groups, all right? So at the moment, there are three of you in a group. So that's nice low number so you could all have space to speak, okay? Michelle, um, somebody raised their hand. Okay. Manny. Hello, Manny. Yeah, sorry to disturb. I didn't get a chance to write the uh, quotations down. Could I have that screen back for us? Hold for a second. What they will I, do is... I took a... Some of the other Michelle, students... I took a screenshot. Oh, yeah, okay. I took a screenshot. So I'll, yeah, I took a screenshot, so I'll put it in the group chat. Okay, yeah. could you? Could okay. you? I, don't, I don't know if they can access the chat, but it's, it's basically... Okay. Um, who can remember the quotations? <laughs> Nobody can remember the quotation. I just remember the one that I was interested in, but not the full wording of it. Okay, <clears throat> Michelle, you're on. You're on. You're on mute. If you're trying to speak, maybe she's not trying to speak. I didn't fa fall in love with. I didn't fall in love. I rose in it. Um. The other one was you yourself, you are the universe and deserve. I'm just paraphrasing them because I they don't are stuck in my head either. Um, let me try and go back to that screen, okay? Oh, here it is. Is this you? Oh, this is Madeline. Thank you, Madeline. Don't ever think I fell for you or fell over you. I didn't fall in love, I rose in it. Um, and Love is never any better than the lover. And you, thank you, you yourself, as much as anyone else in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. And that's by the Buddha. So it's just which one of those you identify, identify with, yeah? Okay. So I'm going to just gonna create the rooms now, okay? Michelle's come back in, but she thinks she's still talking to people. <laughs> Michelle, are you, you, you're, you're now on mute. You're, you're, I can't, yeah, I can't, your, your, your mic is not working, Michelle. Go back out, go out and come back in. Okay. 
And anybody else, as you come in, uh, just... Hi, everyone, please make final points. Okay, okay yeah, she's just sent a message. Because I can hear uh, feed, feedback. I don't know where everybody else went. It's now reduced to 12 participants, which is really weird. Maybe that's because you haven't all come back in <laughs> into the room. Yeah, you're all sort of fl fl flooding back in now. So how was that exercise for you all? Did you get to speak? Renata, are you out? <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So what did you, how did you get on with that exercise? Anybody? Um, so I was with Chinelo and Rudy and um, we got on really well and we were just having a talk about, you know, um, the Buddha quote that yes, everybody does deserve um, love universally, but you have to be protective in terms of who you give that love to because we all being diasporan Africans, be it directly from the continent or from the Caribbean, it's within our cultures that, you know, we love community and we build communities wherever we go. But there are some people who don't share that culture, who do not unfortunately respect the idea of, you know, somebody giving you love quickly. So they just see you as weak or open to their manipulation. So that, and then also that as well as giving love to people is important. Self-love is very important as well, because that's something that I struggled with for a long time, but I'm pleased yeah. to say that I now get both. <laughs> mm. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. Brilliant. Anybody else want to share before we move along? I think in my group, we, um, we, I guess we came up with what love is and what it, what it isn't. So we shared some experiences that we found out. Well, sometimes there's just a chemical being released that makes you feel these feelings and they're not necessarily, it's not necessarily the true, pure, unconditional love is just um, an experience. Mm, mm, yeah. All right. Thank you. And, and yeah, and I, th I suppose the striving for something that is unconditional is what we're, what we're seeking. But as Alex was saying, the understanding, the value of finding that within yourself and for yourself, first of all, uh, is, a, is a mirror, becomes a mirror that you, you, you get back. And I hope you you watch the you got the chance to watch the Muji clip. If you haven't, um, do so. The Muji where he was talking about you know looking at love differently as opposed to to do with relationships with somebody else. The first relationship that you're going to have in love is with yourself, really. But kind of let's go on, and of course we'll have some sessions to keep uh, keep doing this. So let's go on. All right. And I'm hoping that this screen sharing mission or not. So remember to put yourself on mute, please. Was that the right one? Yeah. All right, affirmations are a powerful way to uh, embrace oneself and to embrace the whole idea of love and its power. So this is from the last workshop that we did on affirmations. So it's just kind of a quick run through rather than a full on how to do. And it's about, yeah, how you would use them and why you would use them. Um, and you know, particular uses that they would have in your life, particularly look at the nature of transformation. You're using them because you want to change something. I think of a lot of stuff, a lot of experiences as energy. And for the most part, if we can identify experiences as energy, whatever that experience is, if we can start to identify them or consider them as energy, and you want to, if the energy is, is making you feel in a certain way, you want to shift it. You want to move it so that you don't remain stagnant in that place, especially if it's an energy of negativity. So affirmations help you on, to repeat over and over again the, the thoughts that will align you with a higher state of seeing yourself because 
for the most part, we have been taught the on a lower frequency of uh, self, and that's that's what kind of resonates with us continuously. So, and ultimately, is to enable us to identify with ourselves and with our purpose. And this is really a quick how to create your own affirmations, which I'm hoping by now you can you can do and you know how to do. But I'm saying here to to do do so. I've got these notebooks, which I'll try and show you um, afterwards. You can get yourself a special notebook or a special bit of paper or pen, something that'd be nice so that you can really feel that you're you're doing this committedly. Um, set an intention that you want affirmation to do, and to stick to that. And be sure you're actually ready to believe in that the fact that the affirmations work because if you if you don't really believe them and you're doing them willy-nilly they won't have that impact and then you would probably be saying oh they didn't work because you know i i did it one time and it didn't work and it is about repetition familiarize yourself with the present tense of words and use only those i affirm i'm happy for example i love my family and i have a healthy body body this in compared to i will do something I had this example where I said, you know, a friend was asking me to order something and I said, I will order, but her son said it is done. That's a different uh, projection and a different energy and a different power. Always write positively um, instead of I won't or I do not, you know, write, write the affirmative, the positive and keep them as concise as possible so that you can remember them until you become confident that you, you can do longer ones and attach a positive feeling or emotion only good can come and imagine what that good is and imagine it actually resonating being you know arrived rather than in the process as well just just think of that goodness that feeling of goodness and steer your affirmations away from a the problem so i'm not angry with my family's the other one i just used a minute ago i am not angry you'll just keep sticking to anger your brain will just hear anger 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 or angry 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 and it will perpetuate that visualize the feeling the object or the place and the new you that you're trying to derive and as i said before repetition is what gives them their power you can monitor your affirmations see how they're working and uh, which is why i can tell you because i've been doing these for a number of years now and they they work they they have that effect and so this is a time for you to write yours down it's not a breakout it's just for you right now to write down your affirmation you might have come with an affirmation, keep it concise. Don't elaborate, it's just something that's concise. I, this is an example here. I'm a radiating center of love and peace. And also you can visualize what that looks like, which is like this boom, uh, this light inside of your heart radiating, you know, being that love, you know, of peace. So you can create yours as I go along. Okay, and this is to return back to the, to the to the blog post and thinking of love as something that's etheric as something out there that's ethereal the heart houses the ethereality of love love of course is not tangible the eye would strain to see it physically hands would eternally ache attempting to touch it yet love emanates we know of love because its power electrifies when fully expressed or ignited the light of love can be blindingly manifested in some people. They radiate it with ease and serenity. It's impossible to walk past them without absorbing its force. If modernity has not restricted one's capacity to be still, you will be still and pause there, basking in love's manifesting radiance. And how sweet, how beautiful that moment, and how painful too, because a distant memory now pervades your being. You ache to relive some mythic height that once was part of you. The breath of life stirs within you. You feel newness manifesting. You feel pristine, as though you have just emerged from some dreadfully long sleep or from the depth of the ocean onto an untouched island. You have arrived as if you're the first to make impressions on its beauty, marveling at the whitest, cleanest sand, the bluest water, Palm trees shimmer gently against azure sky, as if to realign your heart to a slower beat. The struggle against the tide is over. You have emerged. Take it easy. Breathe. Let go those palms. Of the Thus, Asar knows his need of the heart as the pump that will quicken his rebirth, releasing him from sleep 
dream and death. His desperate plea then is to feel, to experience creativity. It is to splendidly live again. How resonant is this plea in our lives? How conscious are we of any dream to feel the quickening of spirit? I'd venture that many of us are unaware that this really isn't it, that the stuff in our lives is not the substance of life. Such a reflection remains at the level of the unconscious and is a silent ritual. Our preoccupation with contrivances, the stuff in our lives, is a kind of mantra or meditation. Our focus is misaligned. That negative fire, the rush towards some apparent need to satisfy some apparent lack, which is overconsumption and distraction, allows us little, if any time, for self-reflection. But reflection is necessary if we are to be alerted to the deadness of our spirit. Consequently, we exhibit creative dormancy and the debilitation of self. Put another way, how conscious are we that we are spiritually asleep or dead? What time do we give to understanding the matters of the heart? And if we attend even briefly to such matters, are we properly freed from the burdens of our present and past? Because a superficial study of the heart cannot reacquaint it with its purpose, that is, as giver and sustainer of life and the aspect through which we experience the beauty and abundance of genuine love. So this is an exercise as well for you to do and for you to write down. And then we can come back um, in a bit to, to look at those for you to consider and contemplate momentarily. You can write this, you can think this. What does love mean to you? Do you feel you express it explicitly or implicitly? You keep it in or you release it and you express it and you know it. Do you create space to reflect on love as beauty, as divine? Just consider those and you can write down your answers and we'll come back to them. Regenerating love. And it is this, to embrace the regenerative power of love again, that Asara makes his plea for the return of his heart. To desire life without love is to exert degenerative power, since it is possible to live without love in our lives. But that would vex the soul, would be a devilish deviancy within community and ultimately a pernicious disregard for humanity. Love is greater than those burnt out relationships we cling to as though life was still there. Love is not fear, but freedom. Love cannot express under the weight of our bitterest experiences. Those have to be cast aside or out like the demons they are, though you naturally accept that they have vitally shaped your life and contributed to where you are now. Love is not demanding. It is not control of another's will to love, nor is it control of any kind. It is not a heavy chain by which our emotions are unwittingly dragged through extremes. Love is the power that unlocks that chain. Love is light. It does not hide for fear of discovery. It is creative power, a barefaced dream or leap. And like a flower unfolding from its enclosed posture during the night, love awakens the woman or the man in you. You must be ready for this and yield. And once love has freed you thus, it requires you to make some hard choices. For love has led you to a crossroad. This is necessary for the perfecting of our journey. Here, 
We might wish we were apportioned two lives, but that would never do because love has a rhythm that is natural and precise. No matter how painful the decisions love has brought before us, we must attune ourselves to that rhythm rather than force the recreation of another, which would be an offbeat. The back arching and poised like a ballet dancer ready to make an exhilarating leap, our breathing steadied, we must dare to dance down either side of that crossroad and that without looking back or returning there to the unforgiving past, worn out experiences. And lest, like Lot's wife, we freeze in that posture for eternity. Okay, so with those thoughts in mind, we are going to do another breakout session. And this quotation is about confidence well, these are the quotations which you were sent to do with confidence. I'm hoping you're doing something to the screen by now. I'm hoping you're taking a picture or a screenshot or whatever it is, because when we go out, you can't see them. <clears throat> so I will read the quotations out to give you time. It is not selfish to love yourself, take care of yourself and make happiness your priority. It is necessary. That's by Mandy Hale. When you start seeing your worth, you'll find it harder to stay around people who don't. It's unknown. Your greatest wisdom comes from embracing your mistakes. Unknown. Confidence is a habit you can develop by acting as if you already have the confidence you desire. Brian Tracy. So your task is to consider which of the above quotations you most agree with. Obviously you might agree with mo more of them, but let's think about one that really sticks out to you poignantly for whatever reason and say what those reasons might be. And you can discuss that in your breakout room. So I'm gonna just stop the screen share so that we can come back again. Hello again. <laughs> the smiley faces, the dreamy looks. I wonder what these these are about. Um, so, okay, so you have another um, another go to have a breakout to do those, you know, to do those. And this is about building. This is more about thinking about confidence and which of those you 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 connect with as a confidence builder. And you have another ten minutes. I know it's not long enough. Trust me, I know. Every time I do this, it, it aches the students to come back. I try to push it a little bit longer. And we, we're due to finish at 7.30, but we might go a little bit over. That will give us time to have a, a wider group discussion on some of, the, some of the themes, if that's okay with you. I'm happy to do that. All right. You might fall back in just for ease into the groups that you were in. Now, if at any time you feel that you are not part of a group, as was the case with Brian, I don't know if Brian's still around. Um, do do nudge me or something. You shouldn't be in a group by yourself. Now, if you're not going to go into a group, make that clear and obvious to us, me, whatever, because there are some people that come on, then go go off somewhere. And I the machine doesn't know that you're not physically there, yeah? Can I ask a question, please? Sure, who, I don't know who said that. It's, it's Janet. I was in a group with just, there was just three of us. Yeah. I think I'd like to be in a bigger group this time. Okay, um, I'll try and do that. So I'll try and uh, reduce the, 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 the group or, or make the groups bigger, okay? Okay. Options. Bear with me. Um, no. So, for Janet, I don't know if everybody wants that, but Janet, I'll put. Are you Janet Gale? Yes. yes. Okay. So I'm going to. I'm going to just reassign some of you. Um. Yeah, and um, 
as soon as I open the group, sorry, I'm taking a while just because I'm having to, I'm just trying to make the groups just slightly bigger. Tonya, you're by yourself. Maybe you need to go in that one. Because I think some people have dropped off as well. Um, uh, Okay, they're getting there. I don't know where Deborah is. I don't know if she's a real person. <laughs> yes, I'm real. Could you put oh. me in? I am real. Okay, I don't know what happened because I think you were in a group with Brian and yeah. Brian was kind of on his own, floating around on his home. All right, yeah, no, I don't mind who I go with. <laughs> yeah, so okay, don't worry. I'm yeah, just trying you. to make sure. Yeah, I am real. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. It's good, by the way. Okay, I'm going to open the rooms. If any, if there's any strange things, just message me because I'm just trying to maneuver you. So if anything odd happens, call me in and I'll come in and then you know, yep. Yeah, so I'm, I'm opening the rooms. Remember to join. I haven't made them too big because bear in mind you want to be able to give people time to speak, and I, it's good that the group gets small enough. Alison. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Hi, Madeline. Hey. hey. Don't know who's behind MacBook. <laughs> <Get power. laughs> Yay. Hello, Michelle. We're back. We're <laughs> back. And your voice is loud and clear. I don't know whether there's a Marcia on here, but I just was reading a message. I lost Sheba. She wasn't in my group. I think Sheba bounced out. Oh. And people just bop off the call. This is why we, we, would, we would put these on. They're, they're free. And because of that, people just book. Not realising the agony and the stress that it causes when you do that. And then, you know, they sometimes just don't turn up. So you get like about half, half of a, half of people, to, half of who booked turning up. Anyway, that's fine. Welcome back, everyone. I always say who's here is who's meant to value what we're, what we're trying to do. So I had said that the affirmations, uh, you know, what your affirmations in your journals, I, these are, I don't know if you can see them. But this is like one of the journals that I have. And I've been doing, this is a journal as opposed to necessarily an affirmations book. But something like this, just so, so you can feel like, oh, it's my baby, <laughs> you know, and my secrets and my everything is in here. Yeah. And this is another little one. I love the, le the leather bound ones. It's clashing with the, yeah. And this, this, you can get some pretty ones, you know. So these you can get from places like Paper Chase and or just online, just just generally. But avoid just getting a plain old notebook. You won't take it seriously. It'll just be like, yeah, that's just a thing. That's just, yeah. So how did you get on with the, that session? I I I extended. I gave you a little bit longer to do that. <laughs> uh, so how did you get on with it? Mute. It, it was um, strange to see that we all honed in on the same quote. What was that one? So, when you start seeing your worth, you'll find it harder to stay around people who don't. Right, okay. And why did you think you guys honed in on that one? What was your discussion like around that? Overcoming pain. Mm. Painful lessons. Mm. Yeah. Did anyone else, thank you, Michelle. Did anyone else from the, any of the other groups hone in on that one or did you have a, what, what were your ones? 
Yeah, we did. Okay. And what we what was your reason? Is it similar to what Michelle said or different? I think it was more and this was my interpretation of it, it was more about self acceptance and um mm. uh, uh, seeing that worth in yourself as opposed and putting in the positive love for yourself. Mm. And that and that will attract the same response from others. Mm. Mm. And being mindful of what you project. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Manny. No problem. Anyone else? Have anything different or it was it was was it that one? Was that the one? <laughs> the we had of the workshop. Tracy? We had different ones, but we ended up talking about all of them. Um, okay. They all kind of came together eventually as we were discussing them. Um, but the main one that started off was um, the one about confidence becoming a habit. And then the other one was, um, it's thus, I think it was, it's not your selfish to take care of yourself. Um, and part of that conversation was, um growing up in society where it's always about giving to others and doing for others and always pushing out pushing out pushing out versus taking care of yourself first so that you then can give to others mm. um and then we kind of talked about the concept of the one of our greatest wisdom comes from embracing your mistakes and using your mis your mistakes to learn from so that you then can come to the one that says when you start seeing your worth because now you see your worth because you've learned from your mistakes and then you're quicker to say to people this is how you treat me this is how i would like to be treated and um I, for me i was talking about how we end up being teachers to other people about how to treat us and how to engage with us and what love looks like for us and what we would look for others from others um in that and um I think Serena, she came up with the concept of selfless and the question of, you know, are you less, is yourself less? And so being careful about this concept of being selfless to others because you really end up giving away so much of yourself that you don't value who you are. Mm. Yeah, oh, thank you for those. Those are, those are, those are all brilliant. Um, yeah, and we will we'll go on. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll come back out. I want to go through the slides so that we can then come back and have a bit more of a, uh, a discussion as a, as a group again. So, yeah, thank you. So bear with me again whilst I share this, the final few slides or, or just a few slides. I can't even remember now. Um, okay. Oh. I have to kind of go back a bit. Let me just get rid of this floating. And we got to here. We, we were here and that's what you've just done and I'm taking it that you can see this screen. Okay, so automatic writing then, which is something that we did in the last of this kind of workshop, so you might not be familiar with. Um, but automatic writing is really just you get hold of a paper, a piece of paper or a notebook, one like I've just been, I, I've just shown you or any notebook that you want. And you just decide that you're going to have this random communication with something internal that is to you. And you will just write what comes to your, what comes to you without thinking. It's, it's, it's something that we would have done probably innately as a child would just scribble, <laughs> you know. But obviously because we've got language and the way to form things, we just use the language and we try to write properly and consciously. But automatic writing allows you to just debunk all of that and just, just write, let it flow. And so to do it, this is another workshop, so that's why I'm just racing through it rather than going into it in too much detail. And it's for, for something for you to consider. And I think of this as a way, an, another form of meditating because that is where you're honing in on that higher self or that inner self and allowing that inner self or that inner muse to communicate with you. You could do that with this with drawing as well if writing is not the thing. You can actually just close your eyes or just let the pencil just move um, for you or the paint paint if you the paint brush if you so desire. Okay, so you can agree that it's something that's natural to you to do. You can accept that there is a subconscious agent that you can summon. Just accept it. Just take it for granted that there is something within that you can just 
use utilize in this way decide how you will write use a textbook decide on a time and a place to do this and you can prepare a space or the environment that you wish to do something like this because as i said before it's a kind of a uh, meditation as well and think of it as something sacred you can even light a candle or you know use some sage a glass of water, anything that would help you to bring in that vibration or, or to raise the vibration. You don't need to discuss this and talk, talk with anybody because sometimes people just think that what you're doing is a bit weird and you don't need that vibration. You just need to know that what you're doing is what you need to be doing and you're ready to do it. Be patient if it doesn't come, if like you just sit there before a page. This helps you if you want to write or you want to be more creative. Sometimes we do a lot of analytical, a lot of technological stuff when we're just going out there and working. And if we want to get back to that space of creativity, of just being and just freeing up through the imagination and, and creating stuff, this is a way to, to start that process. So, so be patient because it will take time to haul in the guide or to remind the guys, the, the muse rather, or the inner guide to connect back with you. When you've everything prepared, you need to just be still and wait in front of that blank page. Avoid anything, don't expect anything, just stay in the moment. And this is an exercise not for you to do now, but for you to take a picture of this uh, so that you can then do this after this session or like, yeah, after the session, it could be immediately after, or it could be the next day. But it's, it's something for you to find like 10 minutes or 15 minutes or some time when it's quiet, you know, for yourself. That's the other thing about love as well, about self-love is, is finding you time, time where we just talk, we're talking about selflessness. It's also self-fullness, being full of yourself, being full with yourself, completely with you. And so you can, again, take do this by you. you just do the deep breathing exercises you just close your eyes you make sure obviously you have your place that's prepared and you have your paper and you have everything in front of you and you just decide you're going to do this and that it will have some kind of impact be aware of your thoughts but try not to engage with them don't try to think anything just you it's natural that you're going to do this just like meditation but just flow with with, with them just just put them in some kind of corner some kind of just don't interact with them you know like you just just let it be think about how you feel at the moment as well uh try and name your feeling am i relaxed do i feel anxious do i feel nervous because you should be able to identify those feelings of emotion be aware of what's around you your present environment and when you're ready you take hold of your pen slowly with your eyes closed, you just allow the pen to move on its own anywhere on the page. You keep writing what comes to you without thinking about it. And this would be ordinarily, you would just listen to my voice, but obviously we're not realistically doing this unless you are actually doing it. And you just come out of it. This was from the, the previous uh, workshop. Sometimes you can give yourself numbers of pages that you want to do this, like you can do one page or you can do two pages or it's up to you. All right. So for the moment, then I invite you to just be still and take this in. Just be quiet, be still and take this in.
So we're just going to move along. And that was just uh, something that myself, my words and Danny Thomas put together the, the sound. Um, if you just admit the person that's just coming in rather, I don't know who they are, if they came back in before. Um, okay, so this is now sort of coming towards the tail end of this blog post and about finally to be able to embrace the power of love. Love's rhythm is the spirit of our aliveness, variously expressed as an intensity of physical attraction, connection, electricity hotting and impromptu embrace, a sudden readiness to expose the soul, an extreme, almost irrational urge to protect and nurture, the meddling memories of teenage affairs and adult indiscretions, a sense of falling into something unknown, but being unable to stop it or flying fearlessly through different worlds or swimming in deep waters, crippling vulnerability, memories of past hurt, either as an instigator or receiver, an emotional pendulum of bitter sweetness, haunting melodies from your subconscious, captivating current mood, a desire to start a new life, beginning a new life in reality in some entirely new place. Surges of passion opening the sacral chakra, acute awareness of the delicateness of the heart, dialectics of spirituality for signs that connections are precise, that what is happening, how it's happening, the force with which it is happening was written, Standing at the top of stairs, suspended in the air with a voice you know is ancestral, whispering, hold tight. And don't be afraid, go for it, trust. The simultaneity of assurance and uncertainty, happiness, then fear, that way round, and then fear, then happiness, as the emphasis alternates confusingly combustibility, rather the possibility of imploding from the intense energy surging through your body. The rhythm fades, the chemistry dies through our lack of will to good, which is eternal. Love is, after all, not a wasteful, idle thing, but a powerful alchemical pursuit. It is the becoming, the knowing of self, the consistent flow of regenerative energy. It is the rhythm of aliveness. And finally, in its expression of aliveness, love enables the release of trapped tears from the confines of their ducts. A thumb gently rubs them away, rather smooths them into your face, ritualistically, as though they want you to bathe in your tears and be cleansed thus. They rest their soft hands under your chin, tilting your head ever so slightly. Their eyes meet your eyes, each soul searching for its reflection. Lips touch lips. The tenderness of the heart is exposed. Your breath stops momentarily. Then you gasp as you emerge once more from spiritual death. Your heart has been reacquainted with its purpose. Love pervades your being. The fire of life ignited. Someone is there beside you. How did I get here? They ask. And you say in the softest, sweetest voice, as though whispering some mythic secret, I summoned you from the depth of my imagination. The key to my life, the perfecting of our journey, is there in the ignition. You put it there. But are you prepared to share the ride? Are you ready to dance with me down the road of enchanted love, which some say is dead or dying? Because although I cannot say for sure where that road will lead, my feet now refuse to be still when the spirit of aliveness is the sweetest melody my heart has ever known. 
and I want to feel it again and again as the breath of life now stirs ecstatically within me, colouring my being with the ethereality of genuine love. Okay, so this is some ideas. This is kind of what I've added, especially in the light of what's been going on and as a way to ground ourselves when we're thinking about the whole idea of self-love and protecting us ourselves and being selfful, being complete about our love, being self, being mindfully selfless. There's someone still trying to come on. <laughs> I, I never get it. Um, being mindful of of how we how we love who we love oops i don't know what i just did and when we okay can, can you put yourself on mute so this is this is just some ideas about rooting yourself you can do something by yourself for yourself that is self-centered at least once a week that is just for you it's like you have the power to be self-full completely self-absorbed and whatever randomness that needs to be do it consider however generosity as an art an act of love give generously what you can but mindfully sometimes i think we do the do the opposite of where we think we've been hurt and you know I've, I've given of myself I've given I've given and I'm never given again you know but it's not that you know that's that's negative vibration that's that degenerative power that you're enhancing here we have to try and be generous with our, ourselves no matter what generous with ourselves and with the people because by now if you have harnessed the power of honing those around you because of your self-worth that you'll be, you know, they value your self-worth because you value your self-worth, then giving wouldn't seem like something that is counter to that. Giving generously will be something that in furthermore enhances that as a power. Be grateful all the same. Whatever you receive in the way of experience, say thank you. Because that experience is directing you. It's, it's, it's like an inner compass that is guiding you to a place in a space that you need to be. So whatever the experience, whatever you're feeling at the time, find a way to be grateful. And to, I mean, I say these things from bitter experience for myself and for observing others who, you know, have something that, you know, they, they don't express the, the, their, their gratefulness for, even though that thing might appear as negative. And once you switch it around and think, well, you know, it, it did help me here and I, I could do this from it. And as a consequence of that, I'm able to, you know, so you find ways around it. But gratitude is key. And do something for someone else at least once a month. I'm just saying that so that you don't feel burdened by thinking you have to do this all the time. But at least once a month, think about someone else in a particular way. This is about abundance and generosity and love in practice. <clears throat> Spend at least some time doing something in nature. Sit by a river, by yourself. Well, that should be by yourself, like as in purchase. Flowers, a plant, maybe one that needs care. So you, you love the plant into, into transformation. I consider the plant aspect of yourself an expression of you. you can walk barefoot in the grass or if you don't some people live in slippers you know maybe walk around the house naked or something <laughs> if you don't already do that observe birds a spider's web the rain the phases of the moon do all these things as a way to connect ultimately however love yourself Declare an I love you to yourself in the mirror or before a picture of yourself. And do this every day, every day, every day. Tell yourself, I love you. I observe my mum doing this and I am ever fascinated by how easily she does this with such grace and such beauty. And 
and it's just a marvel for me to see. Oh, and this is me yesterday enjoying the sun, and this is me. I went to the river. I walked in nature. This was me having done a few workshops or well, a few courses back to back. This was me going and celebrating with myself in nature. And I was meant to show you this slide at the beginning, but something happened. But this is a Toni Morrison course that I'll be doing. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, this is on Eventbrite. You can check that out. We'll also be doing an Andrew Levy course, um, which for the first time, this will be the first intake we're doing that, myself and Nicole Rochelle Moore. And this, for those of you who aren't aware, is another course that we'll be doing, myself and Tony Warner. It's part two of uh, the first one that we do. So this is to say thank you for taking part in this workshop. And now we're going to come back into, um, into, into the main room. Okay. Hello, everybody, again. <laughs> I'm back. You can lively up yourselves with your with your visuals or with your whatever you need to do, um, so that we can see more of you. Back, be back, be present in the room, so we can have a collective group dis discussion. <laughs> Thank you, Kafaya. Yes, it is amazing. And yeah, there was there was one of the exercises was asking you um, question. I don't know if you could remember. I don't know if you wrote down anything, and it was about. Whether you whether you have found space for yourself, uh, whether you've even considered love as something that is divine, whether you have done that, I can see this is the light in your face, Yvonne, is perfect, <laughs> even though it is in your face, <laughs> but it's beautiful for me. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah. So yeah, you can open up, you can free up. We've got some time. Hello. Winifred, you came on. I don't know when you came on. I don't know if you came on a bit late, but hi there. Um, so everybody, you can free up yourselves. <laughs> um, what I will do, Janet, is I'm going to share the the vid the recording, right? So you can have it that way. Yeah. Thank you for whoever's in the chat put in. Do I have notes to this session? <laughs> okay, who's asking that question? Do I have notes? No, I'm afraid I don't have notes to this session. <laughs> this is this, the notes. The notes are really the the um, the blog post which you can go and read because that's on my blog. You can go and read that. So that's what I was reading from. The students themselves were in a in a session where they had exchanges, so there's no notes for me to do for there. The slides, you will have that in a, you know, in the recording. You have the recording so you can access that anytime you want and replay. So, yeah, it was about, thank you, Kafai. Do you, do you feel you express love explicitly or implicitly? Do you think that some people just know that you know that you love them or, or, or know that you are desirous of love? How, how do you manifest love in your life? This is what. Um, this is what I want us to use the remainder of our few minutes together to, to discuss. How do you do it? Because a lot of the times we kind of, from what some of the things that you were saying about uh, some of you who are honing in on the giving love too much or, or whatever, sometimes you can run away with that victimhood head. <laughs> yeah. That head of, I'm, I've been giving, you know, but have you really, <laughs> you know? Um, would the other, would somebody else perceive that that's what you've been doing? Mm. So, so it's basically up to you now to just respond. And that's, thank you, Kafai. Do you create space to reflect on love as beauty, as divine, or is it something to take for granted? You got there, huh? If we take it at all. Uh, over to you. Well, the, the subject of love, sorry, this is Brian. Can you hear me? I'm not sure if my yes, mic is up. Okay, the subject of love is um, I'm coming from like a church background, and very much the teaching that I used to get was, you know, you know, turn the other cheek. If somebody slaps you on the right hand, on the right cheek, turn the other cheek. 
and I think I've I developed a thing where you have to give you have to give 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 love give love give love but then I think recently I I because I'm, I'm no longer in church but recently I was still reading the scriptures and then I saw a scripture where it says that you have to love others as you love yourself so it's so it starts with you have to love yourself first and I think for so long in my own personal life I've I've got it back to front so I was giving 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 love or giving love and I and not understanding how why it wasn't coming back but basically I've flipped the script now where I'm trying to love myself and the rewards I'm I'm seeing a definite difference I'm, I'm loving myself some of the things that you were saying in this session I've recently started doing things for myself and it's it's really a mind-blowing um it's almost like it's a, it's a paradigm shift because i'm now i think one of the things we're saying is that it's not selfish to love yourself or it's not selfish to do things for yourself um in the mornings now i go for bike rides i i'm trying to give to myself first and it, like i said it's a complete paradigm shift and like i said i used to give to others um i think i'm waffling i don't even know what my point was but yeah um yeah, I've turned it around and I'm trying to love myself first. And this session was brilliant because, um, yeah, it reinforced some of the things that the Spirit was telling me anyway. And, um, yeah, I, I can't wait for the next one. Oh, thank you so much. It's so quite nice to have a brother or brothers because there's at least, I don't know where Alex disappeared to. I can't see him on the, on the thing. You might have had to run off. But Manny, you know, and Brian, really welcome brothers on this because the last session we did last week was on the feminine divine and there was like a, I can't remember how many numbers there were on the call but certainly there was one brother on it <laughs> and uh, which is quite interesting because I don't think guys really get it like as in the feminine divine if you're not really tapping in that tapping into that you you are going to struggle with the whole notion of 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 divine love, love as divine, because it really is a power that expresses and uh, 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 that acknowledges self-love, self-nurture, the goddess the, and the God, because there's a masculine divine, of course. And so I, I always marvel at the fact that these, these workshops that I do attract mostly sisters, mostly women. But of course, that is necessary too, because when the, when the women, women do experience things in a different way. And, but rather than cherish the idea of victimhood, my task is really about the empowerment that you can get from these experiences. The empowerment not to, to I'm a goddess, you know, <laughs> like that, but to know that that is, that is quiet, quiet, definite power. And you reflect that back to who, whoever you, whatever actually. And it doesn't really matter therefore whether you're in an actual relationship or whether that relationship is just something you got going on with yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's important to declare your divine. And brothers, I, I, I welcome you. I welcome you to to coming on to something like this. I mean, there's a lot we can talk about, Brian. But one of the things you might may, might want to consider is coming on to one of those courses, especially the Af the uh, African Women Resistance Leaders courses, because that does different things <laughs> after the whole churchness. Um, yeah. Anyone else thoughts? I, I just want to say, Michelle, um, I, I, I have sent you the text message. It was me who asked about the notes for the session. Um, but um, like Brian, I mean, I'm coming from a Christian background and I, I find there's so much, so much things that are very rigid and um, I've had to sort of step out from going into church and building or fellowshipping with people. Um, and and going into my own spiritual my own spiritual being connecting with the with with the creator 
And I think out of that, I think it was, you know, there's just so much that was revealed or confirmed to me in terms of, you know, that the love that you have. And I think the last session was also about when you, you know, feel, you know, your self-worth, you then shift away from people who don't, who don't worthy you, you yourself. And it's something I've been doing consciously. Um, sort of being at, you know, angry about how people are behaving, but I know what it is because I have a, I have a very, I have some self-worth and that love that I, I'm building that confidence on that I can't be around people that don't have that. So it's, it was a, just a good confirmation, um, an affirmation of the journey that I'm continuing on. Yes, also from a lot of pain relationships and trying to understand why that was. But I think everything's an experience that helps you to grow. And, you know, love is, is one, is a word that I use all the time. But I think it's just embracing that and holding on to that. So just thank you, mm. you know, for the session. Mm. Absolutely Th amazing. Th thank you, Winifred. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. By the way, did anyone do the affirmation bit? And if you did, you can pop them into the chat if you, if you wrote, or you could say whilst others are popping into the chat. Did you write down any affirmations? Yeah, I did one. Okay, uh, Manny, what's your one? I can be warm and loving if I choose to be. <laughs> okay. You okay. know, like you're saying, I always get on the negative string <laughs> and run with it, you know. Uh, but, say, like you say, said, say, say, say it again, please, slowly. Okay. I can be warm and loving if I choose to be. Okay, who would fix that affirmation and how would you fix it? It's a great affirmation, Manny. The only thing I would do is take out if. Okay, who would fix it differently? I am love's creativity. Thank you, Desreen. I am love's creativity. That is beautiful. Um, who else would address uh, Manny's affirmation differently? I think Manny can just have the first bit and like okay. completely just like get rid of if I choose to be. Just say, was it I am warm and loving? What did you say, Manny, the first part of your affirmation? I can be warm and loving. I think and you should say, second, I am warm. Oh, sorry. And the second part was, if I choose to be. But I'm drawing in that negative all the time. You know what you spoke of? So I, I couldn't, I found it hard to just take the positive, the warmth and the love, without second guessing myself. You know, when I read it out, I can see it in there, the negativity. Mm. It's not that victimhood. I feel comfortable there. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, Kafaya, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, he could, uh, Manny could say, I am warm and loving, or I am warm and love. And yeah. that's it. Yeah. That's the end. I choose to be. You don't even need to be the I choose to be. That, that again, puts another dynamic on it. You know, I am warm I, and loving. I am warm and loving. I am I Close it down. Mm. I'm warm, um, I'm loving. Yeah. Yeah. Manny and everybody, there's a book called um, The Artist's Way by somebody, <laughs> Cameron. <laughs> I can't remember the surname, the first name. Uh, the Artist Way, okay? And in there, you, you can look at that book, look for that book up. And what it is, is about... Um, you, you can write these or these affirmations and each time something comes where it's like a negative that thank you very much Alison <laughs> that's it every time something comes along that challenges what you have just affirmed you you write something else under that so you're constantly battling and that that's really helpful especially if you especially if you're creative but otherwise it will help you so you can look up the artist's way by Julia Cameron and try working with yourself on that. She does these lovely exercises because it's a practical book. It's, it's actually a workshop. It's actually a course that you could do at your own time and at your own pace. And the good thing is uh, with it is that she says, um, oh, you know what? I put the, I was sending that to, to not, not to everybody. Um, you can, what she does is, for example, like, you know how back in the day we used to eat, some of us ate crap things like, a Mars bar. <laughs> no, sorry, I mean, you might still eat Mars bars. But I used to have Mars bar on the way to, um, to school. 
I used to buy a Mars bar, buy just terrible sweets, you know. And what she does is invite you to randomly go one day and just do that, go back in and buy that Mars bar and eat it because there was something it was stimulating at the time. And so to just recover that innocent feeling and that joy, you just do something mm -hmm. that delights you or that delighted you when you were younger and you weren't, you weren't so bogged down by, oh, you know, I've been hurt, you know, by love, they hurt me, they hurt me, they hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, so i i kind of like do that I, di I did it but and i just like i don't like mars bars ever again so yeah. it's just like mars bar but bonbons you know then you ate the bonbon and then you're like what? yeah but it's, it's it, these are good little things to do anyone else any any affirmations or anything else that you want to want to want to stroke um i am ocean's daughter Thank you, Irina Kay. You are Ocean's daughter because if you're Ocean's daughter, then well, you're the embodiment of love, beauty, creativity, imagination, sensuality, sexuality, nurturing. That's just a powerful affirmation. I am Ocean's daughter. Yeah, rocks, <laughs> seaside sweets. I know that, Janet. <laughs> yeah, my teeth are not thankful. Anybody else? We've got a few minutes before we close it down at eight o'clock. And when was the last time any of you did anything in the, with nature, by the way? Anything? I go out um, on a nature walk. I just did one on Monday morning and I go and I stand by the little pond and just watch the naturalness of the water flowing. And I just stare at the, the leaves and look at the, uh, the, the pattern. It's kind of like we have a fingerprint. I look at the pattern of the leaves to see if they're different, to see if they're the same, just mm. to kind of get my mind to focus on something different. Mm. That's perfect, that's beautiful. But of course you don't even need to go out in to do it, but it's, it is beautiful because it's so heightened when you're, when you're out doing it. But you can just as you were saying, like, you know, sometimes my mum does these curious things, like you know, she'll look at tangerine, she'll peel the tangerine, and then she'll spend ages just telling me, Oh, look at the look, God's work is so wonderful. <laughs> you know, she'll just have a a little moment with the tangerine observing it. Uh, when we did the power divine, I was mentioning the power of the feminine divine, I was talking about observing the uh, you know, the seeds, what you do with the seeds uh you know the fruits that you eat don't just take them for granted play with the seeds especially some of them most of them are very erotic most seeds are just there to remind you like of where what it's about yeah and also they proliferate you know uh they proliferate they're never like just they never use you one, but of course now we live in a, in a place and a time where, where they've given us like grapes that don't have seeds and things like that. And, you know, I, I was thinking the other day how children are going to grow up thinking grapes don't have seeds or fruit. And that would be just a weird thing. But if we can as much, just feel the seed, touch the seed, do things with the seed. So really, you're rather quiet behind there. I am love, yeah. <laughs> Fred. Yes. Serena. Yes, um, I when you when you mentioned nature, I, I I chuckled to myself and I thought, does Michelle mean the call of nature? When last I had the call of nature, <laughs> and also being in lockdown, yeah. Um, but I I realised that you wasn't talking about that type of nature. But you're right. I I I, I, I take note, and um, I I do need to get out more um, and make the most of what the nature is around me, um, and kind of. Gratitude to that. I, I more come out at night and look at the moon mm -hmm. um, when it's out or just the sky. Um, and it's a lot cooler nowadays at night as well. But it, it'd be yes. good for me to get out more in the day. Um, mm. So I, I, I've noted that as a task. Oh. But yeah, I recognise you wasn't talking about that type of nature. But I mean, wow. Imagine if I did. Imagine if I was just like, when was the last time you went to do it? That's just ridiculous. Thank you so much. <laughs> Michelle, okay. I love that. I am strong, beautiful, and positively transformed. Yes, you are. <laughs> <I am. laughs> you are. And so on, on that beautiful note, unless there's anything anyone else wants to share, 
we probably can close this down, but I, I invite you to know that you are loved, know that you are love, know that you are beautiful. I am indeed, I don't know who user is, but user, you're absolutely right. I am love and light. And say these things meaningfully. Don't take them for granted because you're telling the universe with all seriousness, thank you. Yeah. So do that continuously. And yes, I know uh, it's tempting to bask in victimhood, but every experience is part of where you are supposed to be when you when you're there and every experience and if you don't know you can look at the life and then the, the life from from her youth uh, her childhood to when she passed to one of my you know somebody that i just i just love her spirit may angelou mm -hmm. her and you know read her her books and understand that this is a, this is love in expression as it's supposed to be um, having gone through so much learn from that life learn from that beauty and yeah and i'll see you on the next time next whichever one of these <laughs> i do all right thank you so much thank you brian thank you manny thank okay. you Tracy. thank you, thank you desiree really yvonne chantel madeline ereneke allison bye thank you. <laughs> people, I love you to bits. Mwah. Alison Winifred, Aisha, is Aisha your sister? Uh, yeah, it's my little sister. <laughs> user, whoever you are, <laughs> Janet, thank you, Serena, Cheryl, iPhone, whoever you are, thank you all. Titsy, all right, okay, user, it, uh, Sitsi, thank you, Titsy, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you are so beautiful, all of you. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening, and I do hope to see you again in another one of these. Yeah, so take care and have a lovely take care. Day. Bye. Good evening. Bye, everyone. Have a good evening. Bye. 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 Bye.